Benji makes the decision to push up and takes control of the fight. Now, from here, and I mean like right here, Benji kind of gets himself into a weird situation, but ultimately ends up grabbing a kill on this guy like, whoo. What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I want to tell you this, man. You are great. Yeah, I said it. You're great. Stop talking negative about yourself, man. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what's going on, you know, as you're playing this game and also in your life. I'm here to tell you that you're great. There's greatness inside of you, and it's coming out this year, man. So get ready. I believe in you, man. I really, really do. Let's get it. So today, we've got another amazing video for you guys. We're back with the analysis series. It's going down. We know you guys love it, and we love it as well. Like, I love doing these videos. And we're going to just keep dishing them out to you, man, all the time. So in this video, guess what? <laughs> it's going down. We're going to be looking at some top-tier gameplay from the one and only Benji Fishy. And we're also going to be taking a look at two of the most feared pros in the NA East region, which are FaZe Mega and one of the best charged shoddy players in Fortnite, Young Calculator. All right, before we start, if you guys enjoyed this analysis video, make sure to drop a like on it. And hey, you know, we'd love to have you subscribe, you know what I mean, and like the video. So go ahead and click that bell button if you'd like to see more content just like this one. It only takes two seconds. It's completely free. And really, there's really no reason not to, man, because pro guys, we're bringing the heat. We really are. And with that said, it's about to go down right now. Bunch of crunch army. It's time to sit back. Relax and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? Let's get hot. It's that bunch of crunch. Yo, let's get this going. Just a reminder that by signing up at ProGuys.com, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to get exclusive access to Benji Fishy's late game course that teaches you how to dominate just like him. Plus, we've got guys by Mongrel, Letchy, as well as live coaches on standby waiting to help you improve. So check it all out and a lot more. Follow the link in the description or visit ProGuys.com, all right? We're starting off with Benji Fishy. Whoo, I'm so excited. Dropping hot straight off the start of the battle bus. Now Benji decides to drop at the pontoon boat, which conveniently spawned in this location. He pulls off this legendary strat of just landing on the flag and dropping down, grabs a shotgun, and cleans up these two players like it's nothing a quick tip is that if you're landing at the pontoon boat you can do the same thing benji did by landing on top of the flag then dropping down to get that chest first but apart from that this whole early game was pretty simple while benji is rotating out of his fancy pink boat <laughs> some unfortunate player decides to take some shots at him uh-oh what you gonna do now benji has a pretty awkward dilemma here like right here Here's what we know. The zone is pretty far away, but he also has the boat for mobility and has two minutes left before the zone starts coming in. Also, it's worth noting that Benji has a pretty solid loadout with shields and chug splashes as well. With this in mind, if you were Benji, what would you do? Would you push the player or would you just continue rotating to the zone? Okay, so if you chose to push the player, then Benji is on your side, man. He decides to push up, and while he gets tagged a bit, he's ultimately able to pop this player in the face and pack his bags with plenty of time left. So, Benji glides onto the Pleasant Dump Island and tries to sneak up on this player to get some pre-fight damage off. Unfortunately, he doesn't hit anything and takes a decent tag back but gets his own shot off while the player is just trying to push up. He decides to break down the player's structure and the guy falls down to around Benji's level. All right, at this point, Benji has a decision to make. What would you do here if you were Benji? Either play defensive and box fight or try to push up for high ground on the player. Hmm. Well, in this situation, Benji isn't exactly stacked on materials, and the player seems kind of good. So pushing up might result in some unnecessary damage right here. Instead, Benji plays patient, waits for the player to get into his box, and he picks up the easy kill. But wait, another player starts to push up, and Benji has to make the same decision again. Oh my goodness. So if you have the option, which one would you pick? Push up for control of the fight, or play low ground and just wait for a second box fight? Hmm. What would you do here, bro?
This time around, Benji is more comfortable with his materials and also has peppers, which make it even easier to take height fast. So, when the player makes the decision to drop down, Benji makes the decision to push up and takes control of the fight. Now, from here, and I mean like right here, Benji kind of gets himself into a weird situation, but ultimately ends up grabbing a kill on this guy like, ooh. Okay, after a quite a bit of time, you know, looking for a fight, Benji comes across this massive build battle. Looking at this build battle, it's relatively high up, and if knocked down, these players would probably die to fall damage. If you were Benji right here <laughs> and wanted to push these players, would you push directly up to fight them or try to break this build battle down? Well, Benji decides to push up and fight these players directly for two reasons. First, they're already getting shots off. So the earlier he can get in, the better. Okay, so as a general rule, when you W key, try to find players who are already low or who are already struggling in some way. This is the perfect example of that. The second reason and probably the main reason Benji pushed instead of just breaking this fight down was because it was structurally supported. The bottom of this build fight is pretty thick, meaning he had to break down a lot of builds to get this thing going down. And it's just much easier just to push up right here. So if the bottom of this build fight was only a few ramps, I bet Benji would just be happy to break it down. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Bunch of Crunch Army, hope you're still there. Here we go. We're going to be looking at the end game from the charged shotgun legend himself, Calculator. Now, this clip is from a game where he dropped like 26 kills and he got a win. Oh my goodness and 19,000 point champion league arena. That's pretty darn impressive. Yeah, I also just said the word darn that it's my second favorite word if you don't know. Obviously the charged shotgun is a pretty interesting weapon and a lot of us have been struggling to learn it. So in his gameplay, we're gonna be specifically looking at how he uses the charged shotgun to its full potential. Who's ready? Let's go. First up, we're gonna be looking at this clip from a mid game fight. All right, Calc is getting W keyed and immediately starts building up to try and get height. After a bit of cranking, he gets up to high ground and gets an easy shot off on his opponent. He ends up pushing the player and ends up in his box. Now, this is a very small decision, but a very important one. Do you think Kalk should just charge up his shotgun or shoot instantly? Since Kalk has his opponent confused, all right, they're facing away from him, not charging up his shotgun would be a waste of like 50 extra damage. The thing about the charged shotgun is that it's best when your opponent is confused or just generally in a weird spot and you have the ability to shoot them. As you can see, his opponent was trying to get out of the box and with his quick thinking and peace control, Kalk blocked him off and got an almost fully charged shot off on the player. Finally, Kalk is able to just pop one more shot and just clean up the kill nice and easy. All right, so what we can take away from this is to always try and just go for peace control and get your opponent in an awkward situation to use a charge shotgun most efficiently. Skipping ahead quite a bit, I just couldn't help but to show this clip here, and I mean like right here because it shows another amazing example of charge shotgun use. We gotta learn how to use this gun better, period. All right, as you can see, Cal goes up to his opponent's wall and after failing to take it, he has two choices. Should he continue going for the wall or try to pre-fire his opponent's edit? Hmm, which one would you do here? In this situation, all right, instead of just getting too aggro on this player, Cal simply just awaits for an edit getting ready to pre-fire and get a free shot. You might be wondering, how did Calc know to pre-fire this shot? My opponents almost never make stupid edits like this in game. Why? Why? And well, look closely at the player while Calc is getting ready to pre-fire. You could just see with some clarity that this player opens his edit menu, which is an obvious sign that he's about to edit. From here, Calc is able to just easily pull off a Mongo Classic and clean up the kill nice and super fast. So when your opponent opens their edit menu, it pretty much always means that they're going to edit. So instead of just continuing to pressure the wall, let them make the mistake of editing on you and just get your free shot off that way. Finally, in our last clip from Calc. All right, he's in the top two and shockwaves onto this player. He builds a ramp and cone above this guy and has two options after editing. All right, should he go straight for the shot to get the kill or build walls just to block his opponent off to get peace control? What would you do here?
All right, the obvious choice here is to go straight for the shot, right? Well, actually, no. Remember that the charged shotgun is the type of weapon that you need to take extra time with. And the time the charged shotgun would take to charge would even be more time his opponent has to escape, right? You could just see clear as day that this opponent was trying to get out of his box. And had Kalk not done that, he wouldn't have had the time to charge up his shotgun and get the kill. This is why peace control is so important, especially with the new charge shotgun. You guys got to check out ProGuides.com where we have the best coaches in the entire world, man. Sign up for our membership and get access to master courses and live classes. Link is in the description. And finally, the last player on this list is going to be FaZe Mega in this early game. First off, Mega lands at this little trailer and almost dies to a literal AI off spawn. Luckily, he did it. <laughs> and the consumables he found inside were good to heal him right back up. Then this absolute psycho decides to jump into the trailer and simply gets out aimed. Moving forward a bit, I like to point out this quick engagement Mega gets into. This player builds above him and has two options. Should Mega run up and face the player head on or make a flank play and just get him from behind? All right, instead of just running up to simply 50-50 the player, Mega jumps down to the side and below to get the easy angle. This works so well because almost nobody expects you to pop up on their side like that. Honestly, this type of play works in so many types of fights and can also be scaled into so many situations. So, you know, the best players always look for unique angles to get on their opponents, right? And this is no different. Instead of just being a psycho and just get, getting into a 50-50 with this guy, Mega completely outplays him and gets this seemingly easy angle for the free kill. All right, you got to bear in mind, this is Champs Arena as well. So the key takeaway here is to not be afraid to possibly take low ground or put yourself in an awkward spot if it allows you to get an angle and just outplay your opponent, just like Mega did right here. This applies to build fights, box fights, and basically really any other type of fight in Fortnite. All right, in this next fight, Mega is stomping on some henchmen when another player absolutely beams him down to 7 HP. It does not look good. So at this point, most of us would just be taking an L. I know I would probably right here, like it'd be over. But Mega doesn't. And you're gonna be shocked by how he manages to pull this kill off, man. First off, when you're low on HP and you're in a fight, the first thing that you need to do is create distance from your opponent, right? And use your hard materials for cover to make it harder for your opponent to reach you. We see Mega do this to try and heal up, and he ends up going for a surprise shot on his opponent's side, which actually works. You'd be shocked by how helpful the element of surprise can be in these situations. Mega continues to solely go for safe right-hand peak angles and keeps eyes on his opponent the whole time. This is absolutely key in these situations because even a literal tap on the shoulder basically means you're like, you're, it's over. Mega continues making his outplays and finally gets on the offensive. Now, the last issue here is choosing which technique to do here in order to stay safe and get the final shot off. So he has multiple options, all right? Mega can make a peace control play with the cone and then peanut butter peek, or maybe do a mongrel classic, or even a simple window edit to clean up the kill. If you were Mega in this same situation, what would you choose to do here? Well, Mega decides that in this situation, the best move to make is a peace control play with his cone and a peanut butter peak. This works insanely because the cone stops the opponent from being able to cover himself. And the peanut butter peak is one of the safest peaks that you can do to deal damage. Had Mega used the Mongrel Classic, there would have been a chance his opponent could still shoot him, right? And the window edit would give him a right hand peak, but allow his opponent to cover himself with the ramp and escape the box. Through all three of these options, Mega clearly made the best choice. All right, guys, in the last clip from Mega, we've got him in a fight that's pretty much between early and mid game. So he drops on this player and he gets a quick shot off and pushes up. This player is quick to launch away and Mega has two options. Should he continue pushing this player or <laughs> just let him get away since he's trying to disengage? Well, for one, Mega's W King, so endgame really isn't a concern, and two, he already has this guy low, and every second he gives him a second to heal as well. 
All right, I cannot stress the importance of this enough. When you're W King, you need to keep that pressure constantly on your opponent and just refuse them time to heal up or reset, right? Otherwise, you're basically just throwing off the damage you've already gotten right out the window. If Mega took any longer to push this player, they'd probably just heal up to full HP by the time he even got to them, resulting in a much more fair fight. But instead, Mega instantly pushes over, and with the quick peace control play, he's just able to clean up the kill. All right, guys, with all that being said, let's recap everything that we've discussed and learned in this video. You guys ready? Because I know it's so much stuff. During Benji's segment, all right, we first saw that in an early game situation with the zone somewhat far away and two minutes on the clock, Benji decided to W key. This is important, remember, because you have to understand the boundaries of when you should be pushing players. In this situation, Benji had extra healing that could be used for Storm in the form of chug splashes, along with mobility in the form of a boat and two minutes left on the clock before the zone started coming in. The second part of Benji's segment covered when, you know, when not to push up for height during the engagement. And this should be decided by your material count and where your opponent is in relation to you. All right. Finally, we covered when to break down build battles, specifically when it's not held up by much. And keep in mind that if players are already popping shots on one another, your time is limited and you should either push them or just break them down ASAP. So during Calc's segment, we talked all about the charge shotgun and the importance of catching your opponents off guard, especially with peace control with the charge shotgun. This shotgun is best used when you can get your opponents stuck with nowhere to go. Also, the charge shotgun is amazing for pre-firing. Be sure to use it whenever your opponent looks like they're going for an edit play. Works almost every time. Finally, during Mega segment, we cover the importance of being mobile and going for unique angles during fights. How you should handle low HP fights, especially by abusing right hand peaks and taking no risk. And finally, how you need to maintain pressure on low opponents to W key and just get that kill without giving them time to heal up or reset. When you're pushing someone, time is constantly ticking and every second matters. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. If you have no one inspiring you today, man, you got somebody right over here that's doing this every single day, man, motivating you guys to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. I hope you're ready to have the best year of your life, man. It's about to happen this year. Keep going. Thank you guys for watching this video. Okay, so if you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to see more amazing analysis and tip videos just like this one. And let us know down in the comments what your thoughts of, you know, these three different players gameplay and how many choices you actually got right. All right, we'll see you soon. Keep eating that bunch of crunch. I want to get this going.